my name is Stephanie. If you're new here, welcome. So in today's video, I'm going to be going over the books that we read over the summer of 2018 and also giving you a review and a look through the reading list that we use by Menza grades one through three. And I'm going to be giving you my honest review and my thoughts on how it went for us. So stay tuned. If you haven't already, grab yourself a cup of coffee or tea. I have mine here. I have my fall candle going. I have um, all of the relaxing vibes going on so that way we can go over this in ease. So I'm going to try to keep this video as short as possible, but um, make yourself comfortable and also take a look at the timestamps below. That way, if you want to speed up to any one part, you can go ahead and do that. So the list that's by Menza is on their website, and I'll have that linked in the description box below. And there are several books. As, as you can see, there's about three, three pages or two and a little bit more than that. And what I love is that it is printable so you're able to check through the list. And then at the end, you sign it and then they give you the option of actually mailing it back in and getting a really neat t-shirt for your child as a little incentive. Now, we didn't finish the entire list because my kids didn't want to read certain books and um, we just didn't make it to some of them. But I think it's a great motivator to have that at the end or as a goal. So this is our first reading list that we've ever done over the summer. We usually just go to the library or Barnes & Noble and pick books that they might want to uh, read throughout the weeks. But I thought it was really neat to go over a list. That way we can get inspiration from others. Um, there are other lists that you can get or just going through a Newbery Medal list and so on. That can also be helpful. But I wanted to show my kids how these lists are available and even um, newspapers and once they become adults if they want to get reading lists just to get inspiration or um, something to kind of fill their minds, uh, they can go ahead and do that. So that's, that's one of the reasons why I decided to go with the list, just to show them that these things are available and that you can um, use them. So I printed off two, one for my son, one for my daughter. and. I ordered most of the books because since my kids are in that emergent reader stage and they're working towards independence, usually we'll read through a book more than once and I find that to be, and, and I find that owning the books makes it a whole lot easier versus having to check out the books or feeling pressed for time. So whenever possible, I try to purchase my books. I use thriftbooks.com, eBay, and I also do use the library, but uh, I tend to like to purchase my books. So I just wanted to mention that up front if you're wondering why, why I have so many of the books. So a lot of these we did have in our library, um, in, in our personal library, because we've used them either in past curriculum re recommendations, we've just picked them up, or, or people have gifted them to us. So I just wanted to mention that. Um, and then of course we supplemented other things that we read over the summer that were additional to this reading list. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show you each book in alphabetical order. So if you print this off, this is what they look like. So the first one is Alexander and the Terrible, No Good, Very Bad Day by Judith Viorst, illustrated by Ray Cruz. And we actually have another book that has to do with money that's a follow-up to this one. And it's all in black and white. And the kids really loved reading this and we also saw the movie afterward. Next is All of a Kind Family by Sydney Taylor. This is one of the books that they weren't interested in reading. It's a longer chapter style book. So um, we're gonna hang on to this one and add it on to our fall curriculum and literature um, for the fall and for the winter. And I, I'm actually gonna be having a video out soon if I haven't posted it already. I'm gonna add a tab up top. That way you can see the literature that we're gonna be reading for the fall, winter, and for the spring. So you can check that out because uh, that'll be added on to that. And then the, uh, the third one is Amelia Bedelia by Peggy Parrish. I can read number two. And my son was able to read some of these and my daughter was able to sound some of the words out. And um, so they really liked this one and her antics. And here um, she's 
she's going through a list of chores and she's misinterpreting them so the semantics and um, of things get kind of mixed up for her so I really liked that one and so did they the next one is Anansi the Spider a Tale from the Ashanti by Gerald McDermott and this one was a Caldecott honor book and this was this one was a lot of fun we actually read a few other Anansi tales with um, through story of the world our summer not our summer but our history curriculum over the summer and in the spring and I'll link a tab to that so, so that way you can check out what that looked like so in there um, there were a few Anansi other stories so it was nice to have to kind of read this one to kind of add on to the ones that we already knew about then bedtime for Francis by Russell Hoban pictures by Garth Williams this book was an older book I think the story was great but there was some reference to spanking and some things that I feel like um, you'll come across with any older books or literature uh, so if that's an issue for you then I would recommend reading it ahead of time and just flagging it or marking it off and that way um, you can make the choice that's most comfortable for you and your family so this is one that I wish I would have read ahead of time because um, it, I was a little surprised to see it mentioned in, in, in a children's book. Um, but I did like it otherwise, so. Next is Blueberry for, for Sal. Blueberries for Sal by Robert McCloskey. And this is also a Caldegat Honor book. And this one was a lot of fun. It showed um, the mirroring of Hello Mama Bear and a real mama, or, or a human mama, is um, with their cubs or their children. So I really loved how it showed how animals um, are just like us in the way that they care for their children and how the child and the little bear go through the same adventure. So this one was a lot of fun to read and we did um, eat blueberries while we were reading this. So The next one is The Carrot Seed by Ruth Krauss, pictures by Crockett Johnson. This one was really neat. I, they really liked the illustrations in this one and it was really simple text so my daughter was able to read these and so was my son and it was just nice um, especially since my son is interested in farming right now and so is my daughter now curious George um, this is a treasury so this is one that we owned already so um, we didn't read it but I just wanted to show you that um, that it was included so this is one that you might have in your library and you can just reread or revisit if you want to George and Martha written and illustrated by James Marshall this was a really neat story showing friendship and um, how how these two friends get along and how they make compromises for each other and things like that. I really enjoyed this one. So this was a nice little theme to go into. Next is Harry the Dirty Dog by Jean Zion. This one was a lot of fun. My kids love dogs and domestic animals. So it was really nice and the illustrations were really pretty. Next one is The Hundred Dresses by Eleanor Estes. This is a Newbery Honor. My son didn't like this one, and my daughter still hasn't read this one. And it's a longer book, as you can see. Um, but I feel like so it might be a hit or miss with some kids. So um, I, I personally, I did like it, um, but it wasn't a big hit for him. <laughs> Next is The Cabin Faced West by Jean Fritz. This is another one that we're going to be hopefully reading next year and that we just didn't get to. I Want My Hat Back by John Clayson. This one, this one was a hit. It was a comedic one, hilarious one. There's not a lot of words and it was a lot of fun. Um, he does eat somebody at the end. <laughs> so if your child is particularly sensitive or is... Um, has a lot of empathy. That's something that you might want to read ahead of time because um, they might cry if they are sensitive. But my kids just found it, you know, hilarious the whole entire storyline. So um, I really liked that one. It's a lot of fun. If I Never Forever Endeavor by Holly Mead. And this is a story about a little bird and learning how to fly and leaving the nest. Um, so I really like this one, especially now that my children are um, becoming more independent or showing some hesitancy. To becoming independent I think this is really nice because it shows how it takes bravery and everybody sooner or later has to um, start doing things on their own when they're ready so um, this is one of those kinds of books next one is Leo the late bloomer so if you have a child that's 
um, a late reader or um, is showing any kind of not delays, but is maybe um, on their own, you know they're, they're they're on their own timeline um, compared to their peers. I think this is a really nice one, and even for a younger child, it's by Robert Krauss. Pictures by Jose Arruego, and it's the story of this little tiger. And the illustrations are really cute. So, as you can see, the list has a lot of different books. It also um, it incorporates some younger books, some older books that really um, encompasses. I feel like if you have a lot of children um, of multiple ages across different spans, it'll really um, have something for everybody, especially if you pick some picture books and a chapter book, everybody's needs are, are met. Um, for my kids, they weren't really interested in the chapter books, but they really loved the picture books. And this is the uh, the little engine that could. This is a family favorite. My, ch my son and my daughter have loved this book since they were toddlers and we had we pulled it out of the bookshelves and um, and it was way behind in the bookshelves kind of forgotten so it was nice to reread it so that's that one and then you have little tooth the story of this little chug boat and it's actually pretty thick uh, you, I couldn't tell that from uh, looking at it online but it's pretty thick so that's that one and then millions of cats my daughter loves cats right now this one was really nice told a story about cats and having to choose <laughs> a cat um, and then it's it's kind of funny and here also um, there is a little bit of aggression here <laughs> um, that I was a little surprised by because they kind of have to fight um, for a position to become the house cat so that's just something that you might have to talk over with your child um, and my kids thought that the cat that won might have eaten all of the other cats so, um, and, it, and it is an older book, so that's just another one to kind of read ahead and plan for. Then we have Paul Revere's Ride, illustrated by Ted Rand, by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. And this is a little bit of history. There are a few that cover history, which I was happy about. Not too many, but a few. It's that one. And then we have Pepe the Lamplighter. I really like this one because it showed how um, the story of um, immigrants and um, child labor and how children had to help um, the, the family. And it also portrayed how um, this family um, lost their mother and the father's widowed and he's also um, ill and disabled. So it presented a lot of different social, um, social conditions and demographics that I feel a lot, of, a lot of kids don't get get an experience. Um, they don't get a chance to experience, but they can, and develop that empathy and that relatability through the book. And the illustrations are really beautiful, um, and it also shows um, Pepe's tenacity because he's um, he's told no by different employers when he's looking for employment or for work. Um, a lot of the people don't need any help, but then he finally finds somebody that is able to give him a job. My, my oven went off, I'm baking dinner, so <laughs> that's what that was. Then we have Rabbit Hill by Robert Lawson. This is another Newberry Medal Honor. And it's about a cute little bunny rabbit. And my kids are into anything furry, so they actually did say that they wanted to read this one, so we're gonna see when we can maybe um, read this one. I'm, I, I'm thinking Easter, since we didn't get to it over the summer. So that's when we're gonna do that one. The Quilt Makers Gift by Jeff Broombell and Gail DeMarkin. My daughter's really interested in into crafts and quilt making and sewing. And this was a really neat story. And there's an accompanying book that you can get that shows you different patterns of quilts that you can make. So I highly recommend that one if you have somebody that's into, that's into crafts or handiwork. Then this is Sam the Minute Man. It's a historical fiction. It's by Nat Nathaniel Benchley. And we're just getting to this one. We haven't, um, read it yet so this is one that we're going to be doing um, we only have a few picture books or ones that they were interested in that, that we're getting to then we have Stella Luna by Janelle Cannon my kids really loved this one it's a board book and they really love the pictures in this one so then th then we have Stone
stone soup. This is one that we owned from before, from kindergarten. Um, so it's really nice, especially now that it's the fall and soup is one of the themes of the fall. So this one was really nice. The Stinky Cheese Man, Fairly Stupid Tales and other, yeah, other things by John Siska. My son really liked this one and it has some interesting illustrations. And I love that the, they play with fonts. As you can see, the fonts are, go from large to small. So it really played with fonts. And the end is extra large. Then we have the story of Babar. This is one that we owned. And I think we received this one as a gift or we got it at Barnes and Noble at some point. Then we have the story of Ferdinand by Monroe Leaf. And you can watch the story. Um, you can watch the movie after you read this one. It's also black and white, just like Blueberries herself. And then we have Strega Nona. And Strega means witch or um, healer. And this is an, an Italian story, and it's an uh, old tale retold and illustrated by Tommy Di Paola. My kids really in love this one. And um, because they liked it so much, we actually got a few other ones that I'll be showing you. Then we have Sylvester and the Magic Pearl by William Stegg. This is a Caldecott metal book. And this is actually one of the very first books that we got um, as part of our Kiwi crates. So I, ha I hung on to it. And I actually had the, um, an audio CD that goes with it that we played in the car. So this was nice because it was another one that, um, that we had. Then we have Tiki Tiki Tembo. This is an Asian story. It's by Arlene Moselle. And there were some really pretty color schemes in this one. Blues and greens. Okay. And then lastly, we have Where the Wild Things Are. Story and Pictures by Maurice Sendak. And there are a few other books that I didn't get um, on the list, but you might want to check out. There's The Dot, there's Freckle Juice, there's The Garden of Abdul Ghazazi, there's, what else? How the Leopard Got His Claws, and a few others. So I highly recommend checking out the list and seeing which ones you might like. So um, I, I hope that you enjoyed seeing those. Now I'm gonna be going over the books that we read this summer. So we are subscribed to National Geographic magazine and we received the June July issue, the August issue, and the September issue and we would read these at night. So this is the Orca one just to show you what it's like. It also has a free poster inside and sometimes it has stickers or playing cards and it has a lot of information but it's, it's really interesting and we usually broke it up into two or three sittings. Um, so this was a lot of fun and my kids love getting mail. I think most kids do. So that's a lot. Um, that's a really fun way to help your kids get um, encouraged and really see a different kind of text, so informational text. Then um, I did res I did get a bunch of books as part of our Kiwi Crate subscription. We got the Quest to Digest, and, and I'm going to be doing a video showing you the Kiwi Crates that my children did uh, over the summer. So look out for that video, and I'll add a tab up top. And this is by um, Jeff Sezek. So there was a lot of unexpected information in here that I did not expect um, to see in a book. Um, so let me just show you really quickly. For instance, let's see. It goes over the different kinds of colon, like the ascending colon, transverse colon, descending, the sigmoid, and a lot of little factoids that you don't even find in textbooks so oh chimey like so many different things so this is a really good one I really enjoyed this one then what really happened to Humpty from the files of Hardball Detective by Joe Dumpty um, and Jenny Franz Ransom this was a lot of fun because um, you use a lot of deductive the deductive and problem-solving skills to try to figure out who's the person that pushed um, Humpty or caused Humpty to fall so it was this one was a lot of fun then we have On a Beam of Light by, by Jennifer Byrne, a story of Albert Einstein. And it just, a lot, most kids know the story of Albert Einstein, but here it just adds an, a different layer to his story. And it was just so, be so beautifully illustrated. I feel like this is what really captures kids and their love of reading, seeing these beautiful illustrations and being transported through a book. 
and being able to see somebody else's imagination and reality. Then this one, um, we actually found the beetle in our garage and we went to a thrift store and I found this one. So I picked it up. So it was great because it went with, with that. Um, and it's by Eric Carl, the very clumsy click beetle. And at the end, it makes a clicking sound, which is really, really fun. And now these are the Stregonona books that we got because my children really liked the first one. We have Stregonona Takes a Vacation, if, especially if you've taken a vacation recently. Um, I think this is an easy way to introduce some words like vacation, summer, and things like that um, to, to children if you want to incorporate that. Then we have Stregonona Meets Her Match. Here it's talking about friendly competition, um, somebody stealing your ideas and how there's always room for more. And then eventually um, the, the original Strega wins out. And I think that's something that a lot of kids, a social um, problem that most kids um, face. So I love how it presents it and it shows how Strega takes it in stride and with grace. So I really liked that one. Then we have Stregonona, her story as told by Tommy DiPaola, and this is um, her origin story and how she became a Strega. So. And then this one goes really nicely. Um, it brings us right into fall um, from summer, Stregonona's Harvest. So we read this one towards the end of August. And I think that's when there's a lot of melancholy and people, um, children are kind of getting upset because they're they're seeing that summer's going away, but this really helps to make that transition and show how fun fall is. So that's what that book did for us and our family. Then we have, um, the, all, all of these books are actually a part of our library and we just reread them. So I'm gonna show them to you very quickly. Eric Carl, Mr. Seahorse. Good, things, good thing you're not an octopus. This is from our kindergarten uh, unit. An octopus is amazing. Coral Reef, and this was one of our original Kiwi Crate books that we've hung on to, and I can't see the author's name on here. Splat the Cat with a Bang and a Clang, The Greedy Triangle by Marilyn Burns, Cats, this is a new one. My daughter really likes cats, so we read that one. Lisa's Airplane Trip, The Sand Castle Contest, The Color of Us, The Tiny Star, are You My Mother, Primary Phonics, The Prince, Click Click, and these are actually ones that um, my son read aloud to us, so I'm not sure why they're here, but um, Click Click um, by Margaret Allen, The Enchanted Unicorn, my daughter's also very much into unicorns, Super Fine Valentine, Mama, Do You Love Me, Are You a Bee, Hibernation Station, I know, an, I know an old lady who swallowed a pie. Bugs are insects. How is a crayon made? Castles, caves, and honeycombs. Caddy no pocket. From caterpillar to butterfly. 10 little ladybugs. Hurry and the monarch. The bee tree. And the tickly octopus. And I am almost done. So as you can see, that's a huge, big old stack. Uh, and my kids, I wouldn't say that they're avid readers, but we do make it a habit of reading at least three to four books every night, and at least two. So um, we joined a homeschool book club over the summer, and the first book that we read as part of that group in a library is Hippopotamister by John Patrick Green, and this is a graphic novel. And it was so much fun. Um, it shows really the overarching lesson, lesson behind this is how everything that happens in our life is for a reason and all the skills and all the experiences that we gain really serve us and, and help us into our purpose or um, along the lines and, and in our life. So I love how um, he's very disenchanted at first with his zoo and where he is and then he leaves and he goes to different um, jobs and then at the end he goes back to the zoo and he refurbishes everything and uses all the skills that he learned in all the different places that he was and, and, and he really gets to help all the other animals at the zoo too. So the homeschool book club has two groups, has an older group that's um, into chapter books or um, are, are, are reading in, independently and are 
in the tween, almost teenage range, and then you have the younger group, which has emergent readers or um, independent readers or children that may be a little bit more reluctant or, or, or even very teeny tiny younger ones. So I, so we are currently reading The Great Pet Escape. This is by Vic Victoria Jamison and it's another graphic novel. I'm seeing a theme here. So it seems like graphic novels are what's in or <laughs> what, they're, what they're really using. Um, so my kids really are liking this one, especially because there's a hamster um, or is he a gerbil? I'm not quite sure. Um, but my son really wants a hamster um, in, in the future, so this has been a hit with him. And my daughter just loves the hamster because uh, her sewing teacher has a hamster and it's a thing for her where she just loves being around the hamster. So. Um, and then this one is Fish in a Tree and it's talking about learning differences and um, challenges. So um, we're going to be reading it just, just because we're not going to be joining in that group, but I found it to be a really great book. Um, I've heard about it before, so um, I picked it up and we're going to be enjoying this as a read aloud. So that is that. And then my kids picked up Animal Jam. They're really into Animal Jam the game. And there's a few chapter books out. So this is the first one that they're reading. It's called Call of the Alphas and they're just finishing it. Right? You guys are just finishing it. So they really enjoyed this one. So, so we'll probably pick up a few of these for the fall. And then my son, um, if you saw my summer curriculum video, um, I'll, I'll link it in the bottom of the description box. Uh, he's been really taking off with his reading in terms of be, being more independent and fluent and really enjoying reading a whole lot more um, with All About Reading. So um, we've been reading these cute little colorful books that my friend gifted me a couple summers ago and he's just been reading these at night whenever he's not reading the readers again um, from All About Reading. So this is Year by Year and these are all by Harcourt. Year by Year by uh, Isabel Campoy and this one's going over how a child is growing up year by year. Show and Tell by Susan McCloskey. This is going over show and tell and how that works. And we're gonna be joining a co-op for the first time this year, so I'm not sure um, if they might be doing something like that at, um, as an icebreaker, but I always think it's nice um, to go over that since it is um, something that can come up either in library or in, or in other places. And then this is Before and Now. So this is showing change. Time for breakfast. My kids love breakfast. It's probably their favorite meal of the day. So this one was popular with them. Water and weather. And the water cycle. Animal babies that hatch. Another anything with a furry, per, uh, a furry character or a furry animal is really a hit. What's cooking? They're also very much into cooking. So this was a hit, dicing and different dishes. Whoops by Vicki Coghill. And here dad, yeah, dad is on the roof, he falls, it's funny. Um, so that is it, that's what we read this summer. I hope that you enjoyed um, having a look through everything that we went over. Um, if you also have a review video, if you're a YouTuber and you have a review video of what you read this summer, please link it at the bottom. I would love to check it out. Please share with me what books you've read or which one um, you liked from the list or what reading list you've done. Um, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you guys so much. And um, if you haven't already, please subscribe. Please follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.